recently onto my organization a lot of freshers were being hired for a multi millionaire dollar kind of account uh, that is for one of my projects for an automation project but you know those guys were not able to clear a, even a single round of interview which was for the client interview and you know uh, those guys were sent back again to the organization then so which is a very bad thing to happen in case if you are a freshers and you have been selected onto an organization that to with a good salary package so you do not want yourself to be onto the project bench right and when i came to know why this happened and you know i was simply flabbergasted to know that all this happened just because of this constructor so most of these guys were you know were having a basic idea of what constructor is all about but they were not able to you know um, work as per the requirement i mean the questions that were being asked were as per the requirement or as per the automation framework how would you able how you would be able to you know call this constructor from this class or that constructor from another class how you are going to initialize them so these guys totally got confused and they were not able to clear that particular round and they were back to the project bench and then from project bench you know you go back to your organization bench and blah 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 so i do not want this to happen to most of you guys so in order to get rid of this kind of scenarios first we will try to understand what constructor is all about okay so i'll go very slow i'll go a little bit deep dive onto this particular lecture it might take some time but at the end of this lecture you will be able to understand the exact and real use of a constructor that to onto a working uh, environment so i do not i am not very you know uh, hopeful of the fact that you know you should have a working knowledge right now you do not you should be having a uh, you know both practical and working knowledge and apart from that you should also be having industrial knowledge as well because even if you have uh, some working knowledge you might not get selected and even if you get selected uh, you may not be able to sustain onto that particular environment for an organization or for that particular project so you should always be having an industrial kind of exposure in which you would be able to accommodate yourself because nowadays the questions have been changed and now nobody will ask you even if you are fresher that just give me the definition of a constructor because anybody anybody can tell you right so let's start the lecture without wasting any more time so first of all <clears throat> i'll go one by one step by step we need to understand what is a constructor so constructor is a block which always has the same name as the class name and you know it is very much similar the way we define a particular method like public void uh, let's say name of a method is let's say test method and we some pass some parameters and then comes a method body in the same way we also define a constructor but there is a reason why we define that particular constructor which i am going to demo you out slowly and slowly line by line okay so first we will try to understand what this constructor is all about so let's say this is a particular class in delhi that i have created so if somebody wants you to create a constructor how you are going to create a constructor so constructor is a block create a block over here this is how you cre create blocks uh, in java and which has the name same as the class name so this is your class name and this these parentheses and this is how you have defined a particular constructor so what type of constructor it is we'll cover later on but first try to understand what constructor is all about right first you should try to understand what human beings are there are different types of human beings good bad ugly very good very beautiful right so that is a different category but first try to understand what human beings are all about like what a constructor is all about we'll discuss the types as well so it is a block which has the same name as the class name right as you can see this is my class name and this block has the name same as a class name there are some uh, modifiers that can be used and also you know they do not have any return type i'll give the answer to this particular question later on you cannot write that you know uh, like public uh, or like return type like a method so these constructors do not have any return type why because they themselves are going to initialize someone so what i mean by this particular line i'll cover it later on okay so but from theoretical point of view just try to understand it is a block which has a name same as the class name secondly they do not have any return type i have not written any return type over here because this block is not going to return anything so person who is not going to return anything means that person becomes an initializer for most of the things right 
that will make sense this line will make sense later on and these are some modifiers that can be used with the constructors like public private protected and default right so if i write over here as public there would be no error if i write protected there would be no error if i write private constructor again there is going to be no error as of now right but if i write a static constructor there would be there is going to be an error if i write a final constructor over here again there is going to be some sort of error because it will say that illegal modifier right so this you cannot define this kind of keywords over here there are some specific set of keywords that can only be described over here which are public private protected right so this is how you can try to define them over here okay okay so these were the what you can say that some modifiers that can be used with only with constructors right and the fourth line that i've written over here it says that it executes automatically whenever an object of a class is created so specifically you do not even need to call a constructor just like we call methods what do i mean by over here if i create a method over here i have to call that met method inside that main method but if a constructor is defined over here that need not requires to be called it will get called itself by default it will make itself you know uh, available to some some place so what i have said it will make sense and I, I am going to give you some demo over here right but first go through the theoretical part and the constructors are used to assign values to the class variable this is very very important um, some freshers get confused you know so do not get confused at this point of time onto this particular point constructor are used to assign values to a class variable what are class variables that is right and what is at that time of object creation these are the two points that you should you know try to highlight it on onto your mind whenever an object is created and at that point of time if you want to assign some values to the class variables you can make use of constructors because if constructors were not there every time a new object that was being called all the object would be having the same value so certain what i have written over here you may be able to understand you may not be able to understand i will make you guys understand each and every step now onwards right so first try to understand how they are used to assign values to the class variables let's say let's say there there is a particular variable which is public int aa this is a variable like right? int aa and take another integer variable like bb okay this much is clear i hope you guys know this is how to define your global variables i'm defining them globally I, if i am going to define them inside this particular thing or over a particular block then the scope becomes local right i have given a very detailed lecture what is local global variable okay so i am defining them over here as a global variable as of now and how to call them them i can call them by making use or by making an object of this particular class right so let's say delhi b equals new delhi and why i have you know a given name of this class as delhi because there is still a reason for that i'll let you know that in the end so with the help of this reference variable d dot i can call this over here right i can call it over here let's say i want to print the value of these variables d dot aa i have given a very detailed lecture uh, but of what these values could be like for local variables global variables for integers for string and for you know a boolean they do have a default value so for integer if it is over here the default value is zero right i hope you guys know if not go pre please 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 request you to visit my previous lectures okay so if i print it out over here if i print it out over here see on to the console it is giving me the value as zero right again again let's say if i want to create an another object let's say it was d1 i am creating a d2 object again if i want to print it so d1.aa d2.aa right again if i want to print it again it is giving me the same value because by default the global vari variable integer has a default value of zero so every time you create an object 
the value of this variable is going to remain the same over here right until and unless we try to change it i hope i am making some sense if i am going to create an another object let's say delhi b3 and again if i want to print the value of this again it is going to give me the same value zero right let's say if i define it as equals to 20 now the thing is going to get a little bit complicated okay over here i have defined it as 20 okay now i have initialized the value of this variable as 20 so every time i am trying to call this value over here or when i'm trying to create an object over here the same value is being getting repeated over here okay but you know what if if i want to give different different values at every point of time let's say if i am going to create a different object let's say d2 i want to assign it to a different value if i want to as again create a different object i want to assign a different value okay so but at this point of time it is retaining the same value no matter how many number of time i run this particular code it is going to give me the same value okay and if i do bb it will give me the zero value why because that by default the local global variable integer has a value of zero and the value of this variable has been initialized so that is why it is retaining its the value over here okay but guys have you ever thought of that you know if i want to change let's say i'm going to create a different object over here and if i want to change the value of this variable over here again i want to change the value of this variable over here because i have different different methods and i want different values to get passed onto the different methods but you know uh, since the value is initialized as 20 so every time an object is created it is going to retain the same value so this is what is happening over here this is creating a problem for me let's say after creating an object i am calling a particular method and i want to pass a different value then how i am going to do that if i want to do that then again what i have to do is that you know let's say then i have to do is like d2 dot aa equals 30 i have to define it over here right if i print now now the value got changed let's say this is a third kind of uh, method onto which i'm going to print something right so again i have to write this particular line of code d3 dot a a equals let's say 40 over here now if i run now the value is being getting changed sorry this should be a a pardon right so for changing values three different times three different line of codes are being written and if i count the system dot out dot print talent let's say for one time chain value six extra line of codes are being written over here right just try to imagine if i create 500 objects over here so 500 multiplied by six is gonna give me 300 lines of code extra right so this will going to waste a lot of memory a lot of things are going to waste i am going to waste a lot of resources as well right so in order to avoid that we are making use of constructors so that we can give the value depending upon our own will and depend how that can depend and can be depending upon our own will i am going to give you a demo for that as well right now every time i want to create an object i will be giving it my own defined custom value okay so let's say this is a these are the variable that i have defined so this dot a equals a and this dot bb equals let's say b b or let's say only i am going to take only one variable over here right int a okay which means that every time an object of this class is getting created you have to pass this particular value now this constructor has become a parameterized constructor initially there were no parameters given over here so that was a no argument constructor but now it has become a parameterized constructor right which means that now if i am go going to create an object of this class or n number of object of this class i have to give the value over here why because it is mandatory now 
because I have defined it that whenever you create an object, constructor is going to call itself. But if you want this constructor to call itself, you have to define something over here. So this time I'm going to define 20, error gone. I'm going to define 30. Sorry, I'm going to define 30 over here. If you just want to see the results, guys, you can simply uh, 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 not to do this. So if I run this particular code, what you are going to see is that now it is giving me the updated value. Okay, only one line of code I have initialized this class variable. Okay, try to remove it. Now it, it will be even more clear. I have initialized it over here instead of initializing over here. When I create object, I'll define my own value. Uh, I'll define my own value, and I will assign my own value to this particular integer a. Right. Similarly, in the same way, if I just copy it out over here, and if I just just try to print it, like again for a new object b2.a, I've given 30, it will give you the latest updated value. Why? Because now some memory is being getting, you know, uh, less consumed. Some we are, you know, doing some less expenditure. Previously, for initializing these vari variables, we were writing, you know, uh, two lines of code extra per object creation. So if there were 400 object created there should have been 800 kind of line or two two lines you can just add it or sum it up right so a lot of lines were getting being wasted over here but now over here in just one single line we are able to initialize so for 500 times initializing them i would be writing only 500 lines not thousand lines okay i would not be doing like d1 dot a equals to 40 d1 dot bb equals to 60 right so i'm not going to do that just create an object over here and this is the way you initialize an object I heard that you guys, uh, like some of the guys were not able to even uh, initialize it depending upon their own will, they got confused. So this is how you initialize the, these kind of uh, class variables with the help of constructors, okay? So there are three types of constructor. One is your default constructor. I'll tell you at the end of the lecture that is default constructor. I'll give you a demo for that as well. In the end of the lecture, I hope I know it is taking some time, but guys, please be with me. Uh, please be a little bit patient. You will be able to understand each and everything, everything, right? So now I think you guys are able to understand. And now there is one more line. Why? So why I cannot write like this in a method? If I do, if I write like this, it simply becomes a method. Okay, it will it won't be a constructor. See, errors have started coming over here. The constructor is undefined. The constructor a local value is not some sort of error will start coming over here, right? Because if you define a return type over here, that this by syntax, by syntax it becomes a method. But if it is return type is not there, it simply becomes a constructor. So this is how it works. And there are some access modifier that can be used like public private protected apart from this if i if i use final or any other kind of keyword that won't be working with constructors right so you can use only three constructors public private protected and this is a very detailed it's going to be a very detailed lecture of public private protected because you i have seen you guys not very confident about protected what is a protected constructor what is a private constructor how to call it or can you even call it right or how to call your public constructor so sometimes you i've seen people not defining this constructor over here making an object and defining it somewhere else this constructor is not getting called because it is not a public constructor so you guys need to understand this particular thing right if you want this constructor to be available uh, so you can make it public so i'll deep dive later on but the scope of this lecture is to understand what is a constructor so till now we have covered what is a constructor it has a name same as the class name there are three types of constructor default constructor i'll tell you in the end the second one is your no argument constructor which was like this when nothing was written over here these two lines once you define some parameters that becomes a parameterized constructor so there are three types of constructors again i'm writing it down please note it down from there one is your default constructor 
the next one constructor is your no argument constructor in which you do not pass any argument and the third one becomes your parameterized constructor right so these are the three things you guys need to remember whenever somebody asks you especially in your client interview because they won't be going into deep but they would be checking your you know uh, working knowledge not your thorough knowledge that you have but they would be checking your working knowledge that you have actually worked on somewhere else or or even not even if you are a fresher because nowadays the things have really got changed okay so they do not have any return type because if they would be having return type they would simply become a method and the second reason is that you know let's say there is uh, there is your father in your family who who himself is giving you your 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 monthly money right in order so that you can take care of yourself so what is the return type of your father your father does not needs to return anything he himself is the initializer right so he is the initializer he himself is giving you something so the return type of that kind of thing cannot be there however you can have your own return type if your father is paying your fees so your return type should be that you know in order to show your gratitude your return type can be you can come first in your class or you can become a very good software engineer you can become a very good hacker right so you you can be your return type but if you are initializing if you are in or to a giving mode like this constructor this constructor in itself is providing some values to these values so, so this is the reason by logical way you can say that you know uh, it cannot have any return type and even if you write the return type somewhere over here just like this it, it simply becomes a method okay so just to keep that concept onto your mind i gave this uh, this kind of example now back to this particular sheet so till now we have covered that it is a block having the same name they will they are not having any return type i have reason i have explained if return type is given that becomes a method and if method, if return type is not given that is a constructor because constructor they in by themselves are used to initialize something right so if they are giving something what they are going to return right these are the modifiers that can be used with the constructors and the and constructor executes automatically right whenever the object of a class is created you do not need to call it like method it will get executed automatically right so since i just uh, created an object of this class this constructor got executed automatically i never called like i had i never did like this like d1 dot delhi you just like method and then you know pass some variables no i i never did like this so it got a uh, called in uh, automatically this is the value 20 so this 20 value got passed over here to this particular variable and now if you just run it or you if you want to see the value you can simply print the value and you can check it right like d1 dot a i hope you guys are able to understand the real concept of constructor till now okay now the things are going to get a little bit tougher please make sure that you are able to understand i'll go i'm going to cover that thing on to my next lecture which i'm going to make in a couple of moments so thank you for your time guys thank you for your patience and welcome back to my channel elucidate